Praise God. This is a great day. And I just want you to know, you can put all of your trust in the Lord. We can put all of our trust in the Lord because he loves you and because he's so good. He's so good. Everything he does, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there's no variableness, no shadow of turning. Let's pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we know that you're good and we can trust you, but we need your help even now as you unfold the Word of God in our lives. Lord, we believe we receive the DNA of your instruction so that our lives will never be the same again. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to unfold the mystery of your grace great plans, the mystery of your word, breathe it into my brother's and sister's life right now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Why, oh why, part four. And today in this segment, I really want to zone in on the benefits of working the fundamentals. You know what? There are benefits, great benefits for working the fundamentals. And when we do that, we can answer the why, oh, whys of life. It's both critical and urgent that you get answers to life's questions. Ignorance is not an option. Throughout this series, we've gained insight to life's fundamentals and the blessings that they are to us. As we've discovered, God's fundamentals answer the whys that otherwise would torment us. Jesus' ecclesia works the fundamentals for excellent outcomes. We saw that. Not religious vanity. No, never. The waters of life pour through the fundamentals for a blessed reality, a blessed outcome. God living with you and in you, kind of good life, all of his benefits activated in your life, in your home, in your living. Yes, kind of like Obed-Edom that we read about, but even better because we got Jesus. Speaking of Jesus, John 14, verse 23, Jesus answered, if a person really loves me, listen to this, he will keep my word obey my teaching, and my Father will love him. And we, talking about Jesus and Father God and Holy Spirit, we will come to him and make our home, our abode, special dwelling place with him, with her, with you. This is amazing. When God makes his home with you, there is great outcome, results, identity, great freedom. And notice how Jesus pointed to the personal responsibility when he said, if, if a person really loves me, that person will keep my word. Personal responsibility. So let's talk practical advantages to being in the fundamentals, being in the funnel. We will look at just a few benefits in this segment of why, oh, why. I think we can all say that we know what it's like to be without God's benefits. I think every one of us have those experiences. We're vulnerable. We're fearful. We're worried. We get anxious, scared. I remember sitting with one of the richest men in the world, and he was deeply worried, deeply full of care about his daughter. With all of his money, with all of his power, he could not make her depression go away. He couldn't stop her confusion. He was powerless to defeat the voices, the suicidal voices inside of her head. He was so full of fear for his little girl. Let me tell you this. When you lay hold of God's truth and you have God's almighty power living with you, scriptures like Luke 10 Verse 19, become yours, and you realize the benefits right where you live. Look at it. Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses, and nothing, come on, say that with me, nothing shall in any way harm you. My friend, you and I, we need those kind of benefits in our life, in our home, right now. Isn't that so? Well, now, Stephen, could, could that really happen? Because, you know, I know a guy named Bill, and he's a Christian, and he's a mess. He's just so full of care and anxiety. Listen, never allow what you don't know to dissuade you from the truth you do know. The big question is, do you know God's truth so that you can answer 
the why oh whys of life? Are you religion centric? Does your faith center around attending a building or attending to God? Does God live with you, with you and your family? Have we substituted spiritual truth for religious objects, events, because they don't require faith? Is it easier to visit a church building than to actually be the church? These questions all have huge consequences for life. Buildings aren't a bad thing. You've heard me say that over and over. But inverting or exchanging God's fundamentals for something less is bad. We don't just export his presence out of our life, but we also export all of his benefits, his protection, his blessings along with his presence. As Christ's ecclesia, it's essential to work the fundamentals if we want kingdom of God outcomes. So let's look at our funnel once again. I'm going to pull it up from the last segment, a picture of the fundamentals at work. Essential to all life answers are God's fundamentals. Being in the truth moves us into our identity, and then it energizes our purpose. These three fundamentals are the basis for answering our why oh whys. We saw the options outside the funnel, and it's only chaos and destruction. We can ignore the fundamentals and say, well, it'll all work out, but predictably, it'll end in destruction, and we concluded that doesn't make God complicit or pleased with such a terrible ruin, such a waste. Children need answers to their whys, but not based on supposition or human judgment. Stay with God's fundamentals. I warned you, don't speculate on facts, but point to laws of life in Christ Jesus. Rehearse the principles. Always come back to the principles. The funnel of life points to the big picture. Truth gives birth to identity. Identity determines purpose. Now you have a life outcome. Questions inside the funnel move toward peace, joy, and life answers, not fear and confusion for you or your children, for your family. As I told you in part three, Pastor Stephanie Martinez brilliantly pointed out that if you invert the funnel, flip it over, and it makes a mess. Even though you're handling the fundamentals, the upside down order is chaos. Don't invert the funnel. Purpose will not evolve into an identity. Identity cannot invent its own subjective version of your truth. Stop before you start. It's more of a lie than just being outside or ignorant of the fundamentals. Going the wrong way on a one way is deadly. Using a powerful tool the wrong way is very, extremely dangerous. Many parents and grandparents are concerned as they see their kids go for this expensive education that either contradicts the order of life's fundamentals or is completely void of them. And Bible college students sitting under a confused professor are certainly not immune from this disorder either. Look, even an umbrella only works if you open it up and use it properly, right? Earlier in this series, I asked you this question. Have we sanitized our life of God's presence and put him in a religious building across town? That doesn't work. Why? Well, no fundamentals. You Point your finger at yourself. You, (laughs) you are part of the body of Christ and essential. You are an essential member of Jesus' governing body called the Ecclesia, church. King Jesus builds his church. You know, the king, Jesus. And remember this, Jesus gets results. Part of asking the why questions of life within a proper context is realizing God's leadership produces excellent outcomes, family of God outcomes. Pam and I, we've traveled the world and we've been guest ministers in many churches and different Christian organizations. Oftentimes, we've been amazed at the good fruit produced in people's lives from wise biblical leadership. Other times, Pam and I, we've walked away very sad, deeply concerned about the unbiblical representation of God's character. We've seen the abuse of volunteers and members squeezed with a religious codependency that demands that they say yes or they're disloyal to the church brand. 
That's the funnel upside down, my friend. That's the funnel upside down. That's not the leadership of the good shepherd, Jesus. You know, you know, Jesus, the one who says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Mm. God's word is the gold standard for identifying true shepherding, true spiritual leadership for your life. So when you ask why, It's not from a broke down, abusive, vain, sacrificial, religiously codependent, my life is going nowhere perspective. No, God hates that on you or in your life. God detests religious form that denies his kingdom power. Why? Because it robs you of outcome, of life giving outcome. God doesn't like that. Look how straightforward it is to work the fundamentals with outcome. Let's just try this. Think about this. Being in God is being in his righteousness, a state of being right. One fellow said, I finally figured out what's wrong with my brain. On the left side, there's nothing right. And on the right side, there's nothing left. Being outside God's will is kind of like that. Let's look at the famous 23rd Psalm and examine the God kind of outcome that relates to being in his family and under his guardianship, in his truth. It's beautiful. It's right. It produces outcome truly blessed, and it's comforting. Psalm 23, 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd. To feed, guide, and shield me, I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely or only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days, the house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. Ah, okay, so here's a quick list of benefits just from Psalm 23, the funnel of life living with God. Remember, Jesus said in John 14, verse 23, that that keeping his word means your home is God's home. This is a short list of answers to life questions when you work God's fundamentals. So number one, you don't lack. This is what we get from Psalm 23. You don't lack. The good shepherd feeds, guides, shields you. And when you're in his care, you don't lack. Number two, he makes you lie down and rest. And not just anywhere, green pastures. It sounds yummy and it sounds soft. Number three, he leads you. But again, not just anywhere. He leads you besides still and restful waters. Are the waters turbulent that you're living by? Time to assess your shepherding. Number four, you are directed and protected. Look, we all go through deep, dark places, through shadows of death, but with the good shepherd in front, we're protected. The good shepherd carries a weapon to protect you, a rod to destroy your enemies, not hurt you, destroy your enemies. The good shepherd carries a staff to guide, to direct, comfort to lift you up out of the ditches. Living with God, you're directed and protected. Number five, we learn that God supplies a banquet table for you. Yes, even in the presence of your enemies. God doesn't say you won't have enemies, but rather that the good shepherd takes care of you regardless of them. Number six, he refreshes your head with the oil of gladness. That means you feel celebrated, respected, honored. No matter the heat of the moment, you've got a full cup running over. Oh, what a good shepherd. Number seven, only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love follow you. You got a legacy. This funnel of life based on the good shepherd's fundamentals only produce and leave a legacy of good, respect, mercy, unfailing love. The good shepherd helps you with a good legacy. And number eight, finally, my friend, 
you dwell forever, forever in God's family, in God's house. You've got royal identity under the crest of God's family name, forever a joint heir with the lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus. I have to ask you, can you see God's protection and shepherding in your life? Do you know God's abiding, residing presence in your life, in your home, in your living room? You can, and you should, you should. And you should be, you can be activating and experiencing all of Psalm 23 benefits today. Now, why wait? Jesus said this in John 8, verse 32, that knowing the truth would set you free. That's why lies, deception is just so dangerous. Once again, listen to me. John 14, verse 23, Jesus said, we will make our dwelling place, our abode with you. Not some building down the street because it's got a pulpit and a steeple. God wants to live with you and in you. He wants to provide for you protect you, bless, heal, and strengthen you. Chase all the joy stealers away from you. Let me give you a quick story of a man that I know trusting God inside the fundamentals. My friend Troy, he's worked for a tech company for many years. In his management director position, he's been able to help many other employees solve problems, promote people, and steward the company's profitability. He does a good job. I know Troy. He's loyal, hardworking, honorable guy who is an expert at what he does. One day, his company fired him for the sake of an incompetent executive. This person was threatened by Troy's hard work and unwillingness to compromise, so he decided to eliminate the threat, and he just had Troy fired. Just think, after years, even decades, of faithfully doing your job, your work, an unethical corporate ladder climber fires you. Can you just imagine the why questions? Maybe you've been laid off or you've been fired. It's not a good feeling, especially when it's an act of injustice, a cover-up for a lazy, insecure leader. Now all these life questions begin to pour out. Here they come. Where do the questions go? How do you manage all the why this and all the why that and what about this and why and oh God, why? Because stuff like this happens and you've got to know what to do with them. Like I said, Troy is a man who trusts in the Lord. So he poured all the circumstances, the facts, the offenses, all of the challenges into the fundamentals that God has provided him. He poured the injustice into God's truth. Well, the truth makes you free from any unforgiveness or bitterness. It pushes down into Troy's identity as a child of God. That means his life, his family, his future are in God's responsibility now. God said he'd provide regardless of the circumstances. And now the family name of God goes deeper into the purpose, the actions, the outcome. Even though it looked like he was out, even though it looked like Troy was out, he relied on God's fundamentals to keep him in. As time began to pass, Troy realized the company owed him severance for ending the contract. Troy focused his attention on helping others and using his skills to be a blessing around him even while being unemployed. God ridiculously blessed Troy with a great severance package, including a half a year of full salary. And when he applied for the new positions, the doors seemed to close. Well, what happens? He put it down the funnel. He could have spilled all of his whys over here and over there, but instead he worked the funnel. He later found out that these companies had financial problems and they ended up laying off their employees. Soon, a great company connected with Troy offering him a position far better than the one he ever had with his former job. It was a promotion. It was a pay increase. It was better people to work with, and it was a great culture. He even helped others come along with them and get a job there. Troy poured his wise into God's fundamentals. So God was able to take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good. Does God love Troy more than other people? No. Well, maybe Troy is just a better person. That's not what triggers God's blessings. Trusting in God 
is the act of pouring your life into God, into his fundamentals. It's not about how good Troy is or how good you are. It's about how good God is. You can be the sweetest, most wonderful person in the world, but if, if, listen to this, if you don't trust God, then you live with all of your whys outside of the fundamentals. And even God can't help you there. Why? Because you've deferred responsibility and chosen out rather than to come in. This funnel for life is God's provision for us. It costs the Father, His Son, Jesus, but you must use it. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There it is. But staying out will never bring you in. We talked about how critical the context is of being in rather than out for your life to truly get the right answers to why your identity your purpose, the outcome are intrinsically dependent on whether you're in or out of God's family. And as we've discovered, God has made a perfect guaranteed way for us all to be in. As I've said before, it is the ultimate of inclusion. God so loved the world, that's you and me, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that means anybody from any background, from anywhere believing on Jesus, shall be saved, brought in from being out. Yes, no exceptions. Praise God. So think of a little lost puppy for a second. She's out. Because of her state of out, she's in the cold. So many dangers. She's in a state of hunger and thirst. In this state of out, our little puppy is shivering. She's weak, anxiously wondering when some hawk is going to swoop in and steal her life. In her best dog language, this little pup might be howling, why, oh, why, in the saddest way. Now along comes a loving person, picks up the little puppy and brings her into a beautiful home. The puppy goes from being out to being in. Suddenly, there's a There's a bowl of fresh, clean water to drink. Beside it, a bowl of tasty food and a warm fireplace to lay down beside. And what? what's that? What's happening? A loving hand is rubbing her head and giving her back a little scratch. Now our little puppy is in the fundamental sign. Why, oh why? Why me so happy and cozy? Can you see that? Sure you can. What changed? Position. Once you were out, Jesus says, come in. Jesus gave a similar picture for his followers using little birds instead of a puppy. Luke 12, starting at verse 6 and 7. Aren't five sparrows sold for two small coins, Jesus asked, yet not one of them is overlooked by God. Even the hairs on your head are all counted. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. My friend, you're worth more than many puppies. I know it's hard to imagine, but you are. Your true worth, your life is established by being in. Why did Jesus say, don't be afraid in this text? Because there is great terror, uncertainty, inescapable fear when you're outside the fundamentals of true life. You weren't designed by God to be away from him. You were made to be inside his truth, with him, inside his family, inside his love. Real freedom is being in the truth, moving in the fundamentals. The reality of God living with you, in you, manifesting his glory in your life, this is amazing grace. There's real evidence of God's goodness. It's persuasive. It persuades your children that what you believe is real. Going to a building or event does nothing to persuade your family or your friends about God's word, about God's truth. Enjoying his amazing grace in your life is persuasive. Yes, it is. It preaches. On the other side of the coin, let's look at it this way. When you try to live outside the funnel of God's life order, here's what happens. You export the presence of God out of your home, out of your life, you lose your freedom piece by piece. Your why oh whys are, they're from a sad, bad place. Your family and friends, they're not persuaded of God's goodness, but rather you misrepresent the truth that you say you believe. 
because you're not really in. You're either outside the funnel or you're holding it upside down. The greater the distance you put between you and God's presence, the more you slip away from order into chaos. We all need the support beams of God's wisdom in our life, our home, and yes, our living room. God is a reformer. He can renovate our ugly into beauty like he did in Genesis 1. The earth was dark and void without shape, and God began to renovate for our good and the future he destined for humanity. God always has destined you for greatness, but greatness requires freedom, and only the truth, his genuine truth, can make you free indeed. His truth is the very beginning of the funnel, making up his fundamentals, his truth into his family, his identity, into his purpose for you. You fit. You belong. You have a call and an assignment when you're inside. Now that's freedom. Let's remember that God's funnel of protection is not about hiding in obscurity and being subservient little religious people that don't rock the boat. We're children of the only and the most high God. Our elder brother Jesus is the line of the tribe of Judah. He's roaring a command that reverberates from heaven throughout the core of this earth, and it's freedom, freedom. We're not here on earth to acquiesce to immoral compromise disguised in the for the greater good arguments. That's just an attack on the fundamentals of God's truth. No, even John F. Kennedy once said, conformity is the jailer of freedom and the enemy of growth. Paul the Apostle said it this way in Ephesians 5, verses 15 and 16. He said, look carefully then how you walk. Live purposefully, worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and witless, but as the wise, sensible, intelligent people, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity, because the days are evil. Get in the funnel, he was saying. You are an agent for freedom. When God affords you the grace to be fearless, you're faithful. And faithful people don't just roll over and go along with immoral, freedom-stealing ideology. Remember the Christians in Iran I told you about? They're growing, exercising their freedom in Christ to worship the King of Kings, even though the leaders persecute them. Daniel, the prophet of the Old Testament, he had to deal with crazy, controlling political leaders who didn't want him praying to God. King Darius made a law that Daniel couldn't have church in his home. Did Daniel acquiesce to the craziness? No, he stood up or kneeled down for freedom right there in his own home. Freedom starts with you coming in, into God's family, into God's truth, into his order of life, leaving the past behind and even saying goodbye to religious traditions that would interfere with God's truth. That's hard for some of us, but it's not impossible. What's impossible for humanity is possible with God. Why you? Because God really, really loves you. Because all things are possible with God and nothing is impossible with him. Maybe you feel like it's, it's just hopeless. Maybe your doctor said it's hopeless. Jesus said, be of good cheer. Be filled with courage, he said. I have overcome the world for you. Jesus said that to you. You are dearly loved by God, my friend. And right now, you can authorize the freedom and the life that Jesus has purchased at the cross for you. For your life, for your home, for your eternity. God won't mandate it. He leaves it to you to choose you get to choose life. Use your faith right now to receive this grace from heaven's throne. Dear Lord Jesus, I want to be inside, inside the family of God. You are the only way for me. You died on the cross, were raised up from the grave. You reign from heaven. Forgive me for my sins. I forgive those who hurt me. Your amazing grace is mine. I'm born again. I belong in the family of God. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's Word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.